Hello, everyone. The story I'm going to share today is Zhang Sanfeng, the founder of Wudang School. Zhang Sanfeng was born at the ending period of Southern Song Dynasty. He was one of the cultivators who had gained remarkable achievements in cultivation and left profound influence on Chinese history. He carried forward Chinese Taoist culture and was also the founder of Wudang School. He left behind many miraculous deeds that had been passed on for generations. When Sun Feng was five years old, he suddenly suffered from eye disease and could hardly see anything. His parents worried very much. They heard that there was a Doist living in Tai Ching Doist Temple, who had a miracle method to treat eye disease. The mother immediately brought him to the temple and begged the Doys to treat San Feng's eye disease. After they arrived, the Doys studied Zhang San Feng for a while and said to the mother, Come to me to treat eye diseases. Besides using the medicine, he also needs to practice Doism. Only by doing so can your child's eye disease be completely cured. Thus, from then on, Zhang Suanfeng was left in a temple, and six months later, his eye diseases were completely cured. However, he was not in a hurry to go home, and instead, he insisted on practicing Doism in a temple. During the time he stayed in a temple, because he was extremely intelligent, he memorized the scriptures soon as he read them. At the same time, he also read a lot of Confucian classics and Buddhist scriptures. When he was 12 years old, the Doys sent him back to his parents. Returned home, Zhang Sanfeng helped his parents to do a lot of housework and cared for them very much. Then he passed the imperial examination, became a scholar, living in an ordinary people's life. Entering the Yuan Dynasty, he was recommended as county magistrate. During this period, he had the chance to know many royal ministers, which means he had more chances to be promoted to high position. Nonetheless, his early adult life in the temple laid a solid foundation for his cultivation, and I have felt tired of fame and interest. Just as he said in his later years, Fame and interest were just the dust from the ancient times to nowadays. What he was longing for was the purest land for freedom. At age of 32, his parents died. In order to keep his filial piety, he left his post and returned home. A year later, a Doys named Chiu secretly visited him, and they talked a lot about Doys cultivation. After the Doys left, he found that his relationship with the human world was ended. He resolutely left his family and his official position with no human attachment. He gave away all his properties. He embarked on the road of seeking immortality and Doism. Zhang Sanfeng traveled all over the famous mountains and lived in many Doys temples for about more than 30 years of seeking the truth of Doism. At the age of 67, he climbed Zhongnan Mountain, where he met his master, Immortal Huolong, who delivered the true method and Doist practice tips to him for four years. After that, he went down the mountain and was wandering all places to temper his well and continue to purify his human thoughts. In 1324, he again came back to Wudang Mountain, which lasted 800 miles long. Since God's son was sold to heaven, through dynasties, more famous Doys live in Wudang Mountain. And this full of spiritual and monastic atmosphere mountain, Zhang Sanfeng was doing meditation for nine years, and finally, he was enlightened at the age of 130 years old and became immortal. Zhang Sanfeng's cultivation experiences encouraged many people who were loyal to practicing Doism. 
He also left many miracles for the later generations. One time, Zhang Sanfeng traveled to the residence of Duke Qiyang, who was the nephew of Emperor Zhu Yanjiang. He said to Qiyang, "I will leave you my coral ring coat and a straw hat, although you are living wealthy life right now. But within a thousand days, you will have disaster, and the whole family will starve to death." At that time, you put on my coral ring coat and straw hat, walk around the garden, calling my name while walking. You and the whole family will be saved. Duke Qiyang thought to himself, "Not only do I have the royal salary every year, but I also have farmland rentals. Just by selling my own property, I can eat it up in a few lifetimes." How could the whole family starve to death so soon? Although he murmured in his heart, he still took them over and treasured them. Two years later, many ministers of the imperial court were imprisoned, and Duke Qiyang was also implicated. The whole family was imprisoned in his mansion, but they were not provided with any rice. The food stored in his mansion was gradually being eaten up. At the time, even though he was holding a lot of gold and silver, nowhere he could buy rice. At a critical moment. Duke Qiyang remembered Zhang Sanfeng's exile before leaving his home. He put on the coral coat and a straw hat, walking around the garden while calling Zhang Sanfeng's name. Immediately, the millet grew densely in his garden, and it matured in less than a month. The whole family survived, stopping by eating millet. After the millet was finished. The imperial court informed him that he was not guilty, and provided the rice to his family again. From then on, Duke Qiyang regarded the coral coat and straw hat as a divine object. If anyone in his family was sick, he took a twist of palm silk from the coral coat and and boiled it in the water. Soon as the patient drank the soup, the illness was immediately gone. One time, a eunuch in the imperial court had a diarrhea. He heard the miracles of this coral coat. Then he sent the court dog to snatch it away. But after he drank the soup, his diarrhea became even worse. Later, the coral coat and straw hat had been treasured in the royal palace for more than seven hundred years. Many miracles of Zhang Sanfeng have been talked about by later generations. His unrivaled martial arts and the truths he realized from Taoism have been enduring and admired. His name was therefore closely linked with Wu Dang Mountain. Thank you very much for listening to the story. More touching stories will be ready for you if you just subscribe. It. Thank you again.